I'm Hulk Hogan, the greatest wrestler of all time. We're not worthy! We're not worthy! You're a spaceman, huh? No, actually, I'm a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I can't go anywhere without getting a boner. How you doing? I live my life. Woo! The Rock says, Sweet baby Jesus in the office. Hi everyone, welcome to Wrestle Rock Podcast. I'm your host, Nostrada Ben, and I will host this episode with my childhood friend, Johnny D. Hey, how's you going, my friend, today? Yeah, fine. Yeah, it's always a pleasure uh, for being here with you for another episode. Another episode? Yes. The fourth uh, season? Yes, the fourth season started with, uh, with uh, Tatanka, uh, Hugo Girard, Hugo Girard uh we uh, we will uh, receive uh tony atlas but now we would like to discuss with an an impersonator of uh super fans of um the Rhodes family i'm talking about uh mike Rimondi. as you going today my friend uh Baby, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just a common man. I, I heard a lot of those names that uh, you bring in, and I'm, I'm in a lot of good company, you know, Tony Atlas, and uh, that's a, that's an honor and a privilege to be here, you know, just for a, a common man myself, if you know wow. what I'm saying. Nice, and we're recording now. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we're, on the mo- we're on the mothership, baby. We had to start exactly at 6.05, you know what I'm saying? 6.05 on the mothership. <laughs> So uh, go ahead. So we would like to know uh, something uh, interesting stories about you because um, we know that you are super fans, but and you are also a wrestling fan. So we would like to know why are you a wrestling fan, my friend? Well, uh, you know, it goes back a long time, baby. I've been around a long time. I'm I'm 42 years old now, and uh, I'm going to uh, you know go in and out of Dusty as. Uh, as it pertains, well, um, uh, the, the first memory of wrestling I remember is uh, my dad brought me to watch uh, WrestleMania two, Hogan versus King Ogmundi. Um, I didn't go see it live, but I saw it in the theater at Madison Square Garden. And that time they played it on closed caption. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, it was in the theater and the big screen and all the matches were on and I had my Hulk Hogan and King Kong Bundy figure, and I just kept beating yeah. them and bashing them together the whole night. And um, after that, I was um, I was totally hooked. Um, my family, my other family, had kind of stopped watching wrestling after Bruno San Martino yeah. retired. Uh, you know, he was Boys. the he was the favorite for most of the, especially living in Brooklyn, the Italian American community. I mean, he was he was it, mm-hmm. um, and. Um, I got hooked right away. I literally got hooked at the very beginning of Hulkamania. Nice. Okay. Uh, many, many uh, people uh, like sports uh, in the world, around the world, such as hockey, baseball, football. But you, Mr. Raymond Dier, what kind of sport do you like other than pro wrestling? I like all the other four major sports. Uh, growing up, I played a little bit of everything, baseball, hockey, football, basketball. Um, in 1994, living in New York, when the Rangers had won the cup, um, hockey, yeah, got, yeah. hockey got yeah, really big. I mean, every kid, every kid in the street was playing roller hockey in 1994. All the three local teams were good. The Islanders, the Devils, and the Rangers were very good at that time. And, uh, I really, really fell in love with, with hockey. As I see you're wearing that throwback Chicago Blackhawk shirt. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Interesting Savard, fact, David. Mr. Denny Savard, yes. Denny Savard, uh, the American dream was, uh, you know, right before I started wrestling, you know, the Miami Dolphins called me for a tryout, and I, said, I hung up the phone. I said, I got to chase my American dream and, you know, become, you know, go do this wrestling stuff. I, my football <laughs> days are over, baby, if you will. Awesome. You have the same voice, man. That's oh. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is so entertaining. <laughs> Mr. Savard is from, Mr. Savard is from Get Snoop. Yeah. Yeah, uh, two hours from Montreal. Ah, 
Yes, and uh, about sports, we'd like to know, uh, did you practice old wrestling uh, inside a square circle or? Uh, unfortunately, no. Um, I wrestled for my high school for mm -hmm. two weeks. Okay. And um, I kind of wasn't a fan of it because I tried to put the my opponent in a, a suplex or a DDT and uh, – The coach was like, I don't know what you think you're doing here. Uh, this is not what you think. And um, I kind of got turned away to how, uh, you know, uh, just it, it wasn't it wasn't theatrical. It wasn't fun. It was it just wasn't for me. Um, I always wanted to wrestle, um, but I'm much more of a fan. I've never got to wrestle and probably never will at being at 42 years old right now. Nice. Um, but. I've had a, a lot of uh, great experiences being a super fan. So um, it's gotten me, it's gotten me in a WWE ring just being a fan and I didn't have to take any bumps. So that's uh, something to be said about that. Yeah. Because uh, wrestling training is very hard if you know what I mean. So mm. yeah. Okay. Ahead, my Personally, uh, my favorite wrestler was uh, Brett the Hitman art. And I loved him for his charisma, his technical, uh, Uh, but you, uh, you your, uh, your idol is Dusty Rhodes. Uh, what captivates you about Dusty Rhodes? Well, baby, he's just a little plumber's son from Austin, Texas. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, believe it or not, I never, I didn't see Dusty until he came to WWF at the time in 1989, the polka dots. Um, living in New York, Jim Crockett promotions and any of that was never on TV. So if you remember at the time, uh, when Dusty came in, they were kind of Hogan and Warrior started feuding, which I didn't like because I was the typical, I like the good guy versus the bad guy. Mm -hmm. So when Dusty came in, he was, you know, baby, he was just a common man. You know, he wasn't so big muscular guy going crazy. He was, he was just, you know, he looked like your, you know, your dad or your uncle who, you know, he looked like a normal guy and mm -hmm. he feuded with, all the heels that I really couldn't stand as a kid, Big Boss Man, Honking Tonk Man, Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, um, Akeem. I mean, he he feuded with all the all the heels at that time because sure. at that time, Hogan and Warrior, they, they were they getting ready to go to Canada, Ontario, baby, to do WrestleMania 6. You remember that? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, 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 I like the Hogan and Warrior, but I was more into the traditional good guy. Mm -hmm versus bad guy um what you know i was used to seeing so it made me it made me a, a big fan of dusty at that time and in your view uh, what stands out as dusty road most outstanding match in his career my friend baby <laughs> against you know the far hoffman and rick flair you know some people say it's the war games baby If that, you know, that uh, WCW, uh, it, for me, it's when Dusty beat Flair for the title um, in the cage. Uh, I, that, that, that's when he, when he, Star -K, Star -K, if I remember. he had beaten, you know, he had beaten Harley Race uh, for the title twice. And he, he had lost to Flair multiple, multiple times. And they finally got in the cage. So the horseman wouldn't, um, you know, the horseman wouldn't interfere. And I think just that it, it, the match was good. It's not no five star match as they call it, but just the moment of him finally conquering Flair was to me, and him holding that belt and um, becoming a world champion again, finally conquering Flair and the Horseman. That that's to me my favorite moment in, in all of his career. Nice. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, we we will talk about uh, the sons uh, of Dusty. Uh, between Dustin and uh, Cody, which one are you most familiar with? Uh, oh, man, baby, I can't pick favorites for my son. I love all my children, baby. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> But I, um, in 2013, Dustin was wrestling independently, and he was wrestling in New York, um, and I had about a half-hour conversation with him. And... Um, You know, me and him really connected. I had read his book. Uh, he wrote a book about 10 years ago or so about his um, 
you know, getting over his addictions and, and, and getting his life together. Okay. So we had a real connection. And when he had saw me dressed in the polka dots, he had gave me a hug and we had talked and, nice. um, I had to connect, you know, I, it was, it was unbelievable to have a connection with someone who I was a fan with of, you know, since I'm a kid. Mm-hmm. And then when Cody went back to WWE, um, attending house shows, he had, you know, picked me out of the crowd, um, one time to do a dusty impersonation and the other time to actually be in the ring with him. So I'm not going to pick favorites. I, I, I love them both. And we, I have had different experiences, both of them. Um, but man, I'll, I'll always root for those guys, no matter what company or where they wrestle, or how long they wrestle, because they're, they're not only just great wrestlers and they've had unbelievable careers, but they're even better people when you get to know them a little bit. Nice. And um, do you believe that uh, during his prime, Dusty Road was a widely popular as Hulk Hogan? Um, I would think that at that time, Dusty and Flair were the Southern, had the popularity of the South that, Hulk, that Hogan had in the North. Because what was happening was, If you were from the Northeast, mostly you were, in, you know, you were going through the Hulkamania era. And if you were down in the South, uh, you were doing, you know, you were going through the Jim Crockett, Dusty Flair. I think after everything, body of work and how they've lived their lives, I think Dusty might be the most loved wrestler of all time. Because unfortunately, Flair and Hogan have had their things on the side that have fans have kind of gone away from them, especially Hulk Hogan. But man, whenever anyone mentions Dusty, the cheers and the chants, you know, you're never getting a boo. I mean, it just happened on TV. Sting, uh, Sting had thanked Dusty. And so uh, to me, he was, he's, he's in the Mount Rushmore. And also for what he did backstage, everything. If you take a whole body of work, of his career and everything he's ever done, uh, it's hard not to put him number one, number two. Really, really. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. WrestleMania is the biggest show of all time, like Super Bowl. Uh, we would like to hear you about uh, uh, Goldust versus Roddy Piper in a street fight match at WrestleMania 12 in Anaheim, California. <sighs> Yes, baby. You know, I like everything about the match, except, you know, my, my son ended up in the, at the end. He's got underwears on, you know what I'm saying? And everybody yeah. sees every, everything yeah. going on. But, uh, yeah. you know, I didn't, you know, Roddy Roddy Piper is the legend. And, uh, you know, it's, you know, running him over with the Cadillac, you know, baby, living that Cadillac. That was so dangerous. I don't know if you uh, reviewed a couple of comments about that, but uh, I saw that Roddy Piper heard for real uh gold dust during this match man that was just outstanding if you know what i mean because i remember one thing and if you check uh the fight um one one moment during the fight roddy piper give a real uh a real punch, punch mm. on the head of uh gold dust and he broke his hone uh Fingers. hands you know and you can listen the crack during the the impact mm-hmm. that was just a man that was a fantastic uh entertaining moment for the wrestling industry you know <laughs> yeah it, it was i mean goldust was very different so for him to have a very different kind of match really? uh at the time was you know it was it, it was big and to to Anyone who wrestles Roddy Piper at a WrestleMania, it's a, it's a career defining moment. And uh, I think I did a lot for him. Um, and it's, it's one of the classic matches ever. And I remember uh, reading or watching some kind of podcast of how both of them have gotten hurt. I think Roddy punching the car too. And just a whole bunch of stuff didn't go as planned because it, it was hard to practice that match because it's, you know, how are you going to practice get running over by a car and jumping on a car? It's not easy, but um I thought it was really good and it, it, you know, it brought the Goldust character to a higher level when, whenever you're, you know, you're wrestling Roddy Piper at WrestleMania. Originally, I don't know if you guys knew that was supposed to be Razor Ramon, Scott Hall, yeah. but he didn't, yeah. um, 
But he left for WCW. Yeah, he had left, and I don't think he felt comfortable doing all the kind of gold dust stuff. And um, I think Piper, I mean, Vince, Vince tapped, you know, Roddy on the shoulder and said, you know, Roddy, it's time, you know, to get in there and uh, make, make some history, if you will, uh, with, uh, with my son, Dustin. And uh, that, that's how it happened. But uh, it worked out because uh, it's a great, it's a classic, all-time classic match. It's probably never been done before really as well as it was back then. And unfortunately, uh, Dusty Road passed away in 2015. So what is your reaction when you learn this, uh, this thing, you know? Oh, man, when Dusty passed, I was heartbroken. Um, I had met him two years before he passed okay. at a convention. Oh, okay. And I was wearing the polka dots. And um, I walk in, everyone starts giggling. And he's, he's looking down, signing everything. And as I walk in the room, everyone's starting to make noise. And he looks up at me and he looks up and he's like, oh, this guy's got to go to the back of the line, baby. Put him to the back of the line dressed like that. <laughs> and he said, no, no, he's okay. You know, let him come in, let him come in. <laughs> and I, you know, I get to him and I reach my hand out to handshake and he grabs me in for a big hug. Nice. And, uh, you know, he was so friendly and laughing. And Such a great I said, show. I said, Dusty, you know, uh, I've been going to the, events dressed like this. I went to WrestleMania, you know, people taking pictures, you know, the fans seem to love it. What, what do you think? Should I, should I keep it going? You know, should I keep doing it? He's like, baby, I love it. You have to keep it going, baby. You have to. He's like, you got to keep it going. So that was 2013. So I haven't been to a wrestling event, not dressed as any form of dusty in over 10 years. Okay. Since I had met him. And then when he had passed, It kind of felt different because at that time, Cody was going through problems with WWE and, uh, you know, it felt a little different putting it on after he had passed away because I wasn't sure if it was respectful or if it was the right thing to do. But I seem it, it was all out of love. And I think a lot of people felt that it was out of love to honor him and, and I, the response was, was even better, you know, that I was honoring him after he had passed. So I just felt like, Hey, it's, it's, you know, he had gave me the blessing to do it and the fans love it. And it, it so I, I just kept going. All right. Okay. Mr. Raimondi, uh, we'd like to hear your thoughts. Uh, excuse me. We'd like to hear your thoughts on the Rhodes wrestling Academy and the nightmare factory. Baby, it's like going to school, baby. You take your pencils and your pens and your apple and you shine it up and you give it to the teacher, baby. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I think it's very smart that they, Cody and Dustin, have already kind of planned out what they want to do after their in-ring careers are done. Um, and I think that if they're teaching these schools, their students will always get a piece of what they taught them. And doing that, they're going to get a little piece of Dusty. So it kind of, it just is continuing that roads, you know, what they're doing in this industry and what they've done. Um, and uh, I think it's smart. I think both of them, I think um, both of them are, are, you know, they've been through a lot. Dustin's been wrestling for, I don't know, 30 years. And then Cody's was in an EVP, did the independent. I mean, there's nothing that these two haven't done. So if you're going to learn from people, I don't think there's two better people to learn from than them too. It's in their blood, baby. The roads are blood. <laughs> <laughs> And we know that you are very involved um, with uh, wrestling cons uh, as a wrestling enthusiast. Uh, how many wrestling con did you uh, typically attend per year? Baby, I love to go them all, baby, but I got that thing called work and bills and family and, and responsibility, if you will. Yeah. But um, I, uh, I always try and go to the local ones in New York and New Jersey. Uh, there's some ones I, I – well, like we, we talk about 80s wrestling con – Unfortunately, 90s wrestling con I didn't get because I was sick. I didn't get to go, but I would have been there. Um, there's uh, the big event in New York. So I, I, I try and go to as many as I can. 
Um, there are so many of them here now. I mean, it's almost every weekend. It's, it, yeah. I remember there being two, two or three a year. It was the big event, um, Legends of the Ring, Icons, and it seems like every weekend there's another convention. So to go to the mall isn't realistic, but if there are certain people uh, that I want to see or certain promoters that I will – um, support no matter what. I will, you know, I'll always, I'll always head to those shows. Okay, nice. uh, okay, Mike. Uh, what was your uh, reaction when Cody Rhodes won the twenty twenty three Wild Rumble uh, last January? Baby, I was happy for him, baby, but I had a feeling. I said something is not right. Um, I when he came out number thirty. I was glad he won, but something told me this is too easy. This is, I'm not sure if this is the route that he's going to win at WrestleMania coming in the last, not wrestling for six months, coming back from the injury. The ending with, with, you know, Gunther was great. But when he came out number 30, something in the back of my mind was like, I, I don't think this is enough of a struggle for him to, to get to the mountaintop yet. I just had that feeling and uh, that gut feeling. But um, I mean, it was awesome to see him come back, unfortunately with that injury. Uh, and I don't think he lost any steam when he came back. I think he's gained momentum since he's been back, uh, even since WrestleMania after losing to Roman. So uh, winning the Rumble is always something. It's always a feather in your cap, you know. And do you think uh, one day uh, Cody uh, could win the Roman Reigns titles, or what? What is your feeling about that? If I were baby, if I was the Booker, you know what I'm saying. If I was writing this stuff like I did in the WCW, uh, to me, Cody wins the Rumble at number one or number two this year. He comes in number one, number two. I think he has to come in number one or two because it's important that his theme has become so important to his whole character. Mm -hmm. And I think they, his, they need to like sing his theme song and he needs to have his entrance and he needs to, he needs to have it hard, you know, hard times, daddy. He needs to go through those hard times, daddy. <laughs> and I think, um, yeah, I think, I think before it's all said and done, you might see the bloodline actually come back together and he will have to much like dusty had to beat the horseman, Uh, and Flair, he he will finally conquer the bloodline and Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 40. I'd be very, very surprised if he doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, that That's my prediction for, for the next, uh, before you know it, I mean, Royal Rumble is only two months away. And about a prediction, as usual, <laughs> for closing mm -hmm. our episode, my partner, Benoit, a.k.a. Uh, Nostradamus Ben, it's all about the French prophet, He tried to predict the future of our guests, and it better be a good one, or you will receive a bionic, an, elbow. An, a bionic elbow, my friend. Okay. <laughs> First of all, thank you so much for the interview. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> baby, what was that? Who was this supposed to be, baby? That, I don't sound like that, do I, baby? <laughs> Here, that's a little, that's a, like the, the Canadian dream, if you will. Oh, the Canadian dream. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> idea. Uh, okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, Mike, for the interview. Uh, it was very appreciated. Uh, my prediction is uh, you will play Dusty Rhodes in a biography or biopic or documentary. <laughs> <laughs> baby, from your mouth to God's ears, baby. I, uh, <laughs> the phone is on. Uh, I'm down for anything. I'm, if it involves doing Dusty, I'm down for anything. I'm, I'm, uh, it would be an honor to be, it's been an honor to be a part of anything to do with the Rhodes family and Dusty. Uh, because you got to remember, I'm, I'm just, maybe I'm just a common man, baby. I'm just a, I'm just a fan who buys a ticket and great things happen. None of, none of this was ever planned that ever had happened at the shows or the conventions. And I think this, that makes it even a better story that just a fan like me, who is a passionate fan who, you know, puts on all this dusty stuff and, you know, baby, look at this. Now I got my own cowbell, if you will, baby. <laughs> I got my own. This is, this is my insurance policy for WrestleMania in case, you know, someone jumps in this year. This is what they're getting. 
But um, it's been a wild ride. It's it's been incredible, and um, I would listen. I'd be honored to do anything, uh, anything at all involving Dusty is always the highlight of my life. Thank you so much for the interview, such as a really good moment with the common man. <laughs> Uh, Mike Ramonzi, thank you so much for your time. This is super appreciated of your generous 25 minutes. Thank you so much. And oh, you're welcome. It, it was my pleasure, guys. It really was. Uh, any anytime. I'm in the I like what you guys are doing. I'm in very good company with all your guests. So I'm really honored to be on here and talk to you guys.